I'm in Warsaw. I'm based in Warsaw. Um, for the past five years, I've been working for uh, Amnesty International here in Poland and um, well for past three years I've, I've been coordinating the campaign for refugees and migrants rights in May it's a, a European campaign that we run at Amnesty that urge um, um, European countries EU countries uh, to express more soli solidarity uh, to accept more refugees especially countries like Poland that uh, as you probably know uh, refugees and migrants they constitute less than half percent of our uh, population um, so we, we can do more of course and we are um, urging our government to do more uh, on that issue Yeah, actually we are a bit um, off the, 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 the main track that refugees take. So we see a lot on TV, of course, like uh, we see Hungary, Austria, Germany and so on. Uh, but in Poland right now the situation like, haven't, I mean, hasn't changed a lot. Uh, we just have a couple maybe more um, asylum seekers coming, but uh, not really not really a lot of people. Of course, our government uh, finally declared um, how many people we will uh, take in through resettlement program and through relocation within uh, the EU. And it will be around 7,000, but in the period of two years. Uh, so, and these people, I mean, they didn't, haven't started to arrive yet. Uh, but well, the uh, public debate, it's uh, very, very polarized. And on one hand, we have many people who contact us and ask us at the moment what they can do. Maybe they can, provide some assistance to refugees who are at the moment in Hungary or in um, Balkans in general. Uh, on the other hand, of course, you have um, so-called anti-immigration marches and a lot of hate speech and um, hate comments on social media, uh, in public debate. So the debate is very, very polarized. We are getting some reports, uh, mainly media reports, about some uh, couple of people coming uh, through these borders, but uh, I believe that there will not be a huge influx of people uh, um, on, uh, let's say, this way. Uh, on the other hand, um, we, um, as a country, we are on the, we have the external border of the EU, uh, on, um, Poland, Ukraine, and Poland, Belarus, and um, we already know that there are some um, even Syrian refugees uh, there uh, who would like to uh, reach um, the EU and farther, of course, Germany. Uh, Poland has been for many, many years mainly transit country for uh, for asylum seekers. Um, so at the moment, we cannot really see uh, any increase in um, asylum seekers here in Poland. We have a lot of Ukrainians coming. Um, it, it's really, really a lot of people, but they come as migrants because, of course, it's much easier for them to uh, to, to arrive and uh, just start to work um, directly without going through really long um, asylum application process. That's why we do not have um, um, official uh, Ukrainian refugees here in Poland. These are people who are coming as migrants. But of course, we can see since the conflict started in eastern Ukraine, we can see uh, that the number increased a lot. Uh, and um, yeah, many people who would, um, they, they would be refugees, but they, they, they choose to be migrants, let's put it that way. And uh, the debate is different, of course, because of um, rising Islamophobia in Poland. And people would say, uh, we accept Ukrainians because, well, at least they are Europeans, they are Christians, and this is uh, what matters. We, we could see this discussion as well in other um, Central Eastern European countries, like in the Czech Republic, in Slovakia, I know that they had the same discussion saying we can accept refugees, but only if they are Christians. Uh, so a bit of kind of um, selection of refugees or migrants who are better or who are worse, unfortunately. 
yes. Um, I mean, yes, right now, yes. The, the biggest questions that are um, raised by the by the opponents of uh, accepting more refugees are that uh, uh, these people are uh, Muslim, they are from the middle, they are Arabs, <laughs> you know, it's a kind of way they call them. Uh, they are Arabs, they will never integrate. And uh, also, uh, just to just to tell you that the the, the arguments that I, they, that these opponents are raising, they are saying, look at uh, other Euro EU countries, like look at um, look at France, look at Sweden, look, look at Denmark. They, they had so many issues with um, uh, integration of uh, asylum seekers, of migrants, especially of those who are Muslims or who are. Uh, Arabs. Uh, there is this problem of uh, radicalization of young um, migrants uh, who go then uh, who then go to Syria, and um, I mean yes, right now the main issue, unfortunately, it's this huge wave of Islamophobia and the, the issue that these people who will be coming to Poland uh, are Muslims. Uh, no, actually not. I, I think we are quite uh, different also in the, you know, post-communist countries. And uh, what we have here in Poland, it's rather, um, 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 the, we tend to speak more about what we have achieved in the past 25 years. And um, we use this narrative as well to say, I mean, we, I mean, the mainstream, let's say, in, in mainstream public debate, um, this narrative is used also to show that, um, look for the past 25 years, we have achieved a lot, and we did it by ourselves, I mean, with our own strength, uh, with our own uh, initiative, and so on. Um, so why should we share it with anybody? Like it's our own individual success, what we have achieved in the past 25 years. And um, well, not so many people are, are uh, noticed that, well, um, we did it with, with our own hands, but for the past decade or so, we have been receiving a lot of uh, EU funds and um, this, this success that we achieved in 25 years in terms of transformation. Uh, well, it's about our own work, of course, but it's also about um, um, great uh, assistance that we achieve, that we received from other uh, EU countries. And this is also part of the debate. Maybe we should give back something. Yeah, actually, it's very interesting because, you know, Amnesty exists in Poland for 25 years and um, I've been um, in Amnesty for five years and I never would have thought that, um, for example, right to asylum could be uh, controversial. Like previously we had, um, we faced a lot of criticism over issues like access to legal abortion or LGBTI rights. Um, and we kind of got, get used to the fact that these are controversial issues. And right now we started to talk more about right to asylum, all the, and uh, some, somehow in the um, really in the uh, in no time in like one month or two, uh, it became a controversial issue. And we, as um, as Amnesty, for example, on our Facebook page, on our social media, even through our email communication, we received a lot of. Uh, uh, hate messages. <laughs> Unfortunately, me personally as well, because I appear on uh, in media, on TV, on radio. So, uh, on my Facebook account, on my um, in at my uh, email box, I received really quite a lot of um, hateful comments uh, regarding myself and our work. So yes, it it became very um, very difficult uh, for people who um, who advocate for for Poland to do more. Uh, in this um, refugee crisis, you know, just to just to show you how bad they can be, it's it's not only that uh, some hateful comments like saying I don't like, let's say, Muslims or Arabs. Um, this is really, really proper uh, hate speech. Uh, very often, this hate speech it's linked or related to our own um, experience, uh, Polish history, and um, they say, for example. 
uh, well, uh, for example, the concentration camp in Auschwitz is still there <laughs> in case we need it. It's something like this. I mean, this can be um, hate speech that uh, these um, Facebook users or um, or uh, commentators use, unfortunately. So really, the the the, the wave of hate speech is really. Uh, um, I mean, it's really uh, unbelievable. I, I never would have thought that this issue would try so, so much controversies and all suddenly um, um, we feel, we as people who advocate for, hu for human rights, for refugees and ra migrants' rights, all suddenly we feel a bit like uh, national enemies, unfortunately.